I am extremely happy that our ambassador to the United States, Shrimati Nirupama Rao, is organizing a function to commemorate uh, the beginning of a very one of the most uh, one of the most profitable partnerships in the world between Dr. Norman Borlaug and his institute Simit in Mexico and our own scientists, farmers, political leaders. Uh, he, Dr. Borlaug first came to India for a very brief visit, just half an hour to one hour he spent with me in 1961 on his way to Pakistan where he had already started his program. We, made an, we sent an invitation in 1963, in March he came for a larger, longer visit following which we developed a road map for collaboration and getting Mexican seeds, improving them for our own conditions and so on. One of the most historic partnerships uh, in, in the world, in the world of agricultural science. Uh, Dr. Norman Borlaug, what I found from him from the very beginning, was not only a great scientist, not only a great wheat breeder, but a great humanist who was full of concern uh, about the people who are underfed, who are not fed properly, the children, women and men of a country who are going to, f going to bed without food. Uh, that has been his concern and therefore rightly the Nobel Peace Committee chose him for the Nobel Peace Prize in uh, 1970 because it's obvious where hunger, hunger rules, peace cannot prevail. And that was one of the messages which Dr. Borlaug also gave. I am, uh, and it has been an exciting partnership where some of the initial material received from him from Mexico, uh, they made the starting point, they provided the starting point for our own work on semi-dwarf wheat breeding. Because in, in India, thanks to the f foresight of Jawaharlal Nehru and later successive Prime Ministers, particularly Indira Gandhi, uh, a large infrastructure was developed for the modernization of agriculture. Fertilizer factories were started, uh, scientific laboratories were established, and uh, this being the 150th anniversary of the signing of the Morrill Act by President uh, Lincoln, I want to say the land grant institutions, or what we call in India, the agriculture universities, uh, have been extraordinarily helpful in moving the momentum of progress. So he came and uh, we developed a joint collaborative program since then he has been, he came almost every year for a week or ten days, whenever he can. Uh, that was one of the most exciting uh, partnerships in terms of a fight against hunger. So I have very fond memories, we are very close friends and uh, we, uh, we had worked together for almost from uh, 1963 onwards until his death. Because even before his death uh, he had organized a meeting on to how to control a very virulent race of stem rust called UG99. Uh, that was his last concern. How do we save the world from this uh, serious pathogen? And uh, so he can, you can be in the meeting, uh, although he was not well, he himself participated in it. And even on his deathbed, he, he was very impressed with the new method of uh, fertilizer placement. And he told before he died, take the tracer to the farmer. In other words, his success was because he not only moved with scientists and political leaders, but above all, he endeared himself to the farmer as a, he, as a farmer's friend, philosopher and guide. I, I, I salute him in his memory. It is our duty to carry on his legacy. And I'm happy that such a get-together with his family members have been uh, organized in the Indian Embassy in Washington. This is a very fitting tribute uh, to a great person who, will all, who has left his footprints on the sands of time in, in the human fight against hunger.